want you to imagine you're in a room. And in that room are four or five doors. Now, you don't know what lies behind any of those doors. But you kind of got to pick one. But it's hard. How do you choose the door when you don't know what lies next? The room, though, the room is familiar. I mean, you can see everything in the room. So the room's comfortable. The room's safe. So maybe you think, I'll just stay here. Whatever. And this is what we do in life. We go, th we go th through doors into rooms. That's what we do. But what we so often fail to appreciate is that we might walk past any one of those doors without realizing or putting together in our minds that behind each door is another room, but that room has more doors. And behind each of those doors are more rooms. And in those rooms, there are even more doors. And so on and so on this goes. What we fail to appreciate is that when we turn down one door, we're not just turning down one door. We're turning down all the rooms and all the doors that lie behind it, and they might number up to a thousand. So we're never turning down one door. We're turning down the first of a thousand doors. Welcome to the With Joe Eby podcast. Today we're talking about the thousand doors. But before we get back to doors, let's talk a bit about rediscovering America. Because this is something I was guilty of. It's something many of us have been guilty of, rediscovering America. I first rediscovered America when I was five years old. I've rediscovered it a couple of times since. And I was disappointed. I was very disappointed. Because when I rediscovered it, there was no party, no recognition. No one was impressed. I guess it's probably because heaps of people rediscover America every day. What I realized was that I was a couple of centuries too late that Christopher Columbus is credited with discovering America, although it's not named after him, finally. He beat me to it. So that's me, five years old, hard done by. No one remembers the second person to discover America. They only remember Columbus. Though the ironic thing is that if he'd set out to discover America, it would have been a contradiction and a paradox, because obviously... America didn't exist before he found it. I mean, if it was already called America, that would have meant someone else had found it, which means it's not actually a discovery. And there wouldn't have been a map either. I mean, I'm sure something was contoured. I'm sure he wasn't just heading into nowhere with no idea what he'd find, but he hardly had an idea. That's what a discovery is, right? If the map already exists, then it's already been discovered. So that's the thing I learned about discoveries. It's the hard lesson that was beat into me as a five-year-old who'd had his life achievement wiped off his slate, is that for something to be a discovery, it has to be unique. No one's found it before. That's a discovery. So when I think about each of us, I am pretty confident that each of us does have a unique discovery that only we can make. It might not be, though, and don't get carried away, as big and grand as Columbus was. It might not be something that everyone recognizes us for, that history remembers us for. But I don't even think that's important. I think what's important is learning where that discovery lies. We can't follow anyone to make our own discovery. If we do have a unique discovery, and that's not just something I'm saying to make you feel special, and like you're unique, if it is true, we certainly can't follow anyone else there because no one's been there before. Columbus couldn't follow anyone. And that's the thing. Discoveries lie in the unknown. 
opportunity, real opportunity, the best opportunities live in the unknown. The people we give kudos to do what's never been done before. We're not in the habit of celebrating too much people have retraced the steps of giants. We're much more likely to reward and adore those who, as Sir Isaac Newton said, stand on the shoulders of giants to see what's never been seen before. So your unique discovery, whatever it is, lies hidden behind doors. You can't see it looking forward. You don't get to see it from one room with all the thousand doors lined up on the way. That's linear. The great things in life are not linear. Because if they were linear, if they were in the first room we found ourselves in, then everyone would find them and therefore they wouldn't be a discovery and therefore they wouldn't be our discovery because someone would have beaten us to it. So if we can't see it, if it's not linear and it's not in the room we're in now, we don't know what it is, there's no map because we haven't made it yet, then how, Joe, on earth, are we meant to make any sort of unique discovery in life? And the answer is simple. You can never be certain what room you're going to find it in. Bloody hell. You thought it was going to be easy? It's not going to be easy, but it's going to be fun. Certainty is a funny word. And uncertainty, wow. We're all afraid of uncertainty. That's why we choose the linear. We're uncertain what lies behind the door, so we're reluctant to go through them because what if we don't like what we find? What if we can't come back? And we'll regret not taking one of the other paths. But opportunity lies buried in uncertainty. You remember that, right? So here's the thing. You don't know if it'll be in the next room. You don't know if it'll be in the room after that. But if you go through a thousand doors, if you go on what I call a thousand doors journey, you can be certain that you would have found it somewhere along the way. If you've been in that many rooms and seen that many things and done that many things differently to everyone else, the returns in life, the real returns in life, compound. But we've got to stop fearing uncertainty and start embracing it. So the doors metaphor will run, for the foreseeable future at least, all the way through this podcast and all the way through my life in particular. It's the way I look at all the great things that really do come because they all come hidden behind doors.